Hello YouTubers, uh, this video is going to be about thermoelectrics. Uh, I've been working with them for a while. I wanted to give a brief uh, description, a brief understanding of how they work, and also point you guys into some applications. Um, this is uh, by no means everything to understand uh, about the process, uh, but this is a good place to start. I'm hoping to relay this information to you guys so you guys can take it and uh, benefit from it. And uh, hopefully by your benefit, you'll share what you're doing and that'll benefit me too. So thermoelectrics. Uh, thermoelectrics is a process of moving electrons through heat flux or heat flow. Uh, it can be a TEG or a TEC. Uh, thermoelectric coupler or a thermoelectric generator. Uh, there are a couple of terms that I want to make you familiar with and one is the CPEC effect and one is the Peltier. So you'll see these little modules and you're like, well is that a, what is that? Is that a TEG, TEC, is it, what is it? Well, <coughs> the CPEC effect is when you produce power from a thermoelectric generator. That's where you put hot on one side, cold on the other, a particular heat difference in degrees and the flow of electrons from the cold side or from the hot side to the cold side will move electrons and generate electricity. Now it's been around a long time. It really has. Um, but that's uh, that's how they produce power. Now Peltier is the basically and essentially the very same thing. Only the Peltier is when you introduce power to one of these devices. And when you introduce power to one of these devices, one side gets hot and one side gets cold. So it depends on how you use it or whether you're using the Seebeck effect or the Peltier. Uh, these are the gentlemen that uh, first became aware of it. That's why it doesn't say Van Powell. And it's not my idea, it's somebody else's. Uh, so there's two types of materials in, in there, and it's an N-type and a P-type. If you know anything about batteries, and you know there's an anode and a cathode in a battery, uh, very similar to a battery uh, in that you have the two different polarities going on in there. Uh, some of the materials used to uh, produce these uh, are uh, like a high temperature difference one, uh, is uh, silicone and germanium. Uh, some of the more exotics are gillium telluride, uh, bismuth has been used for a long time. Uh, and they generally have about a 5% efficiency. What does that mean and how, and how can we use that? You know, efficiency is nothing if it's not practical. And if efficiency is low and it's highly practical, then it's a little bit easier to deal with too. Uh, one of the advantages in building a uh, wood stove and trying to heat water with it or trying to use water as a thermal mass, the reason they work so well is, is uh, because you can accurately, I can accurately tell you how much electricity, thus how many BTUs are going into my water and if I know the volume of water, then it's easy to find my math to figure out what I'm going to temperature I'm going to get to over what span of time. So a 2,000 watt fire at a 5% efficiency would be 100 watts. Now, so it's just the heat flowing through. The heat flowing through moves the electrons. Uh, it doesn't rob any of the heat. It doesn't take any heat or use any of it, okay? So if you're using these in a wood stove, uh, whatever energy is, goes through them is delivered into the cold side. They don't use any of the heat itself, just the heat moves the electrons, okay? So, uh, if I've got a 100 watt TEG built on the side of my wood stove, I can also look at that 2,000 and know that 2,000 watts is what I'm pulling off of my wood stove and if I know about 3,100 BTUs 
is in a kilowatt hour, it just enables me to put this stuff together mathematically and get a better understanding of it. So if I've got a 100 watt uh, thermoelectric generator on the side of my wood stove, I know for sure that what's transferring into that water volume would be 2,000 watts. Now I could take that 2,000 watts, do a little uh, formula with how many uh, BTUs it takes to raise water, and I could figure out my volume of water, how far I'm going to raise that. And when we're building stoves, we're just like, well, I'm going to build a water jacket, and it's going to be about this size. Well, that requires a lot of trial and error, whether it's too big or too small. And it's uh, depending on what kind of material you've got on the outside of the water, what the surface area is, how close it is in proportion. That would be a very complicated uh, uh, algebra problem. You know, it'd be hard to put all those factors in there. It's, it's hard for some of our basic guys to, to get it done. Uh, so this allows me to really know what I'm going to be putting into my water and not really losing anything while I'm putting it into it. Anything that don't go in the water is going to be dissipated into the house anyway. So I'm not, I'm, it's of no loss. So all these wood stoves that have a water jacket or all this, well, I just simply have one question. If you're going to transfer that heat into the water, why would you transfer that heat into the water and make electricity for free while you were doing it, right? And how long does one of these things last? Well, they're solid state. See, I started learning how to build Stirling engines. I, I realized quickly that inefficiency, what it is, is waste heat, right? When you've got a car going down the road and it's getting hot, that's energy that should have been used pushing you down the road, but it's not to begin off the heat is waste. When you have a light bulb and it gets hot, that's energy that should have been produced in the light and given off as light, because that's what you wanted it for, but it didn't, it made heat and it wasted it instead, so there's waste heat. In a generator that you're running to produce power, right? That muffler gets hot and that's waste energy bleeding off that. That's energy that came out of that gasoline, wasting and going to nothing, uh, dissipated into the air, right? Our, uh, yeah, uh, catalytic converters, generators, all that it has mufflers on it. That stuff's getting hot. That's waste energy coming off of there. So what I want to tell you is, is you can design a muffler on your generator that you can put thermoelectrics on and get another 100 watts of DC power and increase the efficiency of your generator. In fact, you can increase the efficiency of just about anything that you can come up with that has waste heat coming off of it as a factor of inefficiency that it has, okay? So, uh, so these things, let's say, let's say one is rated at 100 watts, okay? So one is rated at 100 watts uh, how much heat do I have to have flowing across this module? They're little square modules with two wires, right? This would be a cold side, top here would be hot. Cold side would be the underneath side. Well, how many of them do I have to have? Uh, or how much heat do I have to have flowing across to hit 100 watts? Well, that's where you get into your delta T, right? Your delta T and your power relationship. So most of these are rated like if there is a hundred degrees difference temperature, which that's what delta T is, temperature difference from the sides, right? In this case. So if there's a hundred degrees temperature difference, if one side's hotter than the other side by a hundred degrees, they will put out what they're rated at. So at a hundred degrees temperature difference, a hundred watt thermoelectric generator will put out a hundred watts. If there was only 50 degrees temperature difference, it would only put out 50 watts. And if it will take the temperature and it would go to 150 degrees temperature difference, it would put out 150 watts, but they're rated at 100 watts, okay? Now, they do have limits. The hot side can't get over a certain, depending on what material they're built out of here, and the cold side can't get over a certain something, depending on what material they're built out of here. So you have to make sure that they operate within their range, or they will burn up and deteriorate and go away and go bye-bye. However, if you use them like they're supposed to, they're going to last for about 300,000 hours. Figure that up in years, okay? So, not a bad deal. And I started learning to build Stirling engines because I wanted to make waste heat into energy. Stirling engines have moving parts. Moving parts wear out and break down. That maintenance. I discovered these little critters here. Well, these little critters here they don't have any maintenance still. They don't have any moving parts. I don't have that problem. Line. So it, it's, it's only 5%, but hell, it's practical. So let's go with the practicality. Now let's talk about uh, some applications and uh, how some of these things are used. Solar. 
right? So they've already come up with some solar uh, glass evacuated uh, vacuum pulled on a glass container with these things inside uh, and the water running across the cold side that is out doing solar panels, okay? It's the next big thing. I'm going to be showing some of my work on this stuff too. Guys, I've been doing a lot of this stuff for years. I have just now started putting this stuff on YouTube, okay? You bear with me. Give me a little time. I'm going to get more of it out. Uh, so it can be done in solar. It can be captured solar through vacuum or it can just be direct sunlight. Uh, it will make some uh, energy for you. Lights, metal halide lights, the ballasts, they get warm, right? Whatever. Could you put a TEC or TEG on the side of that and, uh, and increase that efficiency? So just think about it, guys. Where's the waste heat at? If there's waste heat there and it's 100 degrees, wow, you might have an opportunity to improve a lot of industry out there. Uh, wood burners and HVAC. Well, wood burners, hey guys, forced air is a great attribute to a wood burner, right? But the downside is electricity. How about let's go with uh, thermal electrics on our wood stoves and can't we provide our forced air for free? Now once we've, uh, we've got our wood stoves good and hot and we're heating water with it and we need to move that water around to uh, heat these other rooms, well, why not use a solar 5 watt pump that'll pump you know a few gallons a minute and move that for free or have more TEGs and get a 10, 10 watt pump if you need to move more with more head, right? Whatever you need. Wood burners and HVAC, this stuff is really not used. Well, you know what? It is used in HVAC because you do have a thermal coupler in your HVAC. Uh, the way I'm referring to it here is, is that uh, what it how it could be used. Uh, now, these, the low temperature ones, and even some of the high temperature ones, they'll, they'll make enough electricity in your hand. You can just, you want a flashlight that'll never go out, ever, just ever. Well, if you know how to build a jewel thief, what's a jewel thief? Well, a jewel thief is something that steps the voltage up, right? Well, the jewel thief, if you can take one of these Peltiers, or one of these TEGs, and use it as a seed back, and put it in your hand, and the top has a small um, heat sink on it, piece of aluminum and it's run, power is run to a uh, jewel thief and then to a bulb, well you can have a flashlight that runs off of your body heat. And I'll never do it long as you're really long as you're yeah, hands not frozen and I'm going to say if your hands frozen that you're probably not going to be in too good a shape anyway. Um, so you yeah, know just hand heat. Uh, some of you see guys doing experiments with them on top of coffee mugs. Uh, you'll see guys uh, call them a candle magnification where they'll take a candle and heat one side and then use that heat to not only put off the heat the candle and the lights put off the, by the candle but an additional light or LED above that which would be a candle magnifier. Uh, motors and engines. I've already talked about the generator how that could be, uh, step up your generator and get a lot more power off your generator. Uh, your engines in your car. Hey don't we have a catalytic converter that gets really really hot? I'm going to tell you something guys. In the near future relatively in your future. What you're going to see is you're going to see no more alternator because an alternator pulls on the car. It's got a belt that goes to it and it provides drag and the more current that that alternator is trying to produce, the more drag it's bringing on your car, it's dragging down your gas mileage and your horsepower. Couldn't we take thermal electric couplers and put them all around the uh, catalytic converter and use that heat and transfer that electricity back up to into the engine without that pull? Hey, there's a more efficient automobile. There's an improvement. Not a bad improvement. Uh, small refrigerators. So you guys will look around and see that these uh, these coolers you plug into your car, right? Uh, 12 volt coolers. That's a Peltier unit in there. There's not a condenser and a compressor in that thing. That's a Peltier unit. What it's doing is one side's getting cold, it's into the inside of the cooler. There's a small flam blowing the heat off the hot side, blowing the heat to the outside of the cooler. That's how they run. A lot of your uh, small motel hotel refrigerators now, they don't have any condenser and compressors, too much maintenance in that crap, right? If that, if you want to work on a condenser and compressor and those coils and all that stuff in there, or do you want to just be able to pull out a little square module with two wires, 
throw it away, put another one in there after you've used it for 300,000 hours. Now you can build a refrigerator as big as you want to with these things. And it's a great way to build a DC refrigerator. You want to build a small DC refrigerator on your own, you don't have that, comp you don't have that complex comp uh, knowledge of how the condenser and the compressor and the, and the Freon and all that stuff works. There's no need in, in going and understanding all that. You can build your small 12 volt cooler out of your thermoelectrics. Um, and there's other, anywhere you guys can think that uh, waste heat might be identified uh, and it's all around us. It's all around us. Our HVAC is putting off hot air all the time, right? Uh, lots of things we use. So this is a small introduction. Now let me tell you how these guys uh, use them. So they need to be cold side. So one of the reasons they work so great with water transfer on a wood stove is, is you're, you know exactly how much heat is going into your water, number one. Secondly, you're providing enough power through that heat transfer into your water that you can move that water around for free and blow air over it for free. So that it, it can be an industry, it can be an industry changer. I thought of a small unit that I could put into a cabin. I can probably build a unit that you can go into a cabin and put up and have a waterfall in there, a radio, a small TV, and some lights, temperature and all that, hooked up to a unit in one self-contained unit and all you got to do is walk in and magnetically or just uh, whatever wired up to the side of a wood stove, one piece of it wired to the wood stove and over to this unit and you'd have all the power you need and have charge control in it. You can set it up on charge controls just like you can through solar panels. If you watch some of my earlier videos on rocket stoves and thermal electrics, you'll see that I've, I've done that several different ways trying to, you know, just trying to see what I could do, see what kind of improvements I could make. Okay, so this is a uh, short, brief introduction into thermal electrics, how they work, and uh, getting you guys started. Um, I really like the guys that are working on the wood stoves. Um, that's, I don't know why I'm into combustion. I guess I'm a fire bug. <laughs> but uh, that's a great one, and it's great for cars. It is, I'm working on some really good solar ones. I'll have to show solar concentrators, and uh, I'll be showing those soon. I hope this, guys, I hope this helps you guys out. Thanks for watching.